Formula One is ready to visit its birthplace. This will be the 12th round of the championship, and after this race, exactly half the number of races of the 2024 season will be completed. With the consistent improvements that have been shown by the McLaren team over the last few rounds, the 2024 championship has been turned into an interesting one, and now there is a clear rival to Red Bull. Welcome back to Total F1. We're going to discuss about the British Grand Prix in detail. But before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. The commencement of the British Grand Prix as a non-championship event is dated back to 1926, and in the initial stages, it was held at a circuit in Brooklands. However, it had no regularity and was not organized annually until 1948. After moving the event to Silverstone, it got more popular, and organizers tried to hold it annually. Then two years later, it became a part of the first ever Formula One championship in 1950. The first race of the inaugural edition was held at Silverstone, using a circuit built on a former airbase, and that's why Silverstone is regarded as the birthplace of Formula One. Then it became a permanent fixture of the Formula 1 calendar, despite the event being shifted to a few other places. The event was held at Antry or Brandshatch alternatively with Silverstone during the period between 1955 and 1986, but the event was moved to Silverstone once again back in 1987, and since then, it has been used as a permanent venue to hold the British Grand Prix. Over the years, several changes were introduced to the layout of the Silverstone circuit. The one used currently for Formula One events is 5.891 kilometers long and composed of 18 corners and two DRS zones. Despite the changes to its layout, the Silverstone circuit has been able to secure its identity as one of the fastest venues in the world. That means the speed of the cars is clearly tested here, and teams always come with upgrades that suit the speedy nature of the circuit. However, the speed of the cars is not the only factor to record a victory here, as the famous corners within this Silverstone layout like Maggots, Beckett's and Abbey offer some of the greatest challenges to the drivers. When we look at the historical stats of this historic motorsport event, Ferrari is the most successful constructor here, with 18 victories. Behind it, McLaren and Williams are the next most successful constructors at the British Grand Prix, with 14 and 10 victories respectively. Lewis Hamilton has been able to record eight victories at his home Grand Prix, becoming the most successful driver. Behind him, Jim Clark and Alain Prost are the joint second most successful drivers at Silverstone, with five victories each. Over the last three seasons, we can see three different winners, and the McLaren team has a good chance to turn that number into four during the 2024 edition. When we look at the different tyre strategies possible for the British Grand Prix, teams prefer to go with two-stop strategies than any other option. The quickest option available is starting with softs and switching to medium compounds during laps 11 to 17. After taking the maximum out of these medium rubber, drivers switch back to softs on lap 33 to 40. Another two-stop strategy uses all three compound varieties in a relatively slower option, but it is used by some teams. Drivers start with mediums and then switch to hards during the first pit stop between lap 14 to 20. After continuing on these hard compounds, they take soft rubber on lap 35 to 42 for the final stint. Some drivers who are good at managing tyres go with one-stop strategies as well. Some prefer to use a medium-hard combination and arrive at the pit stop between lap 21 and 27. In another option, drivers start with hards and do a long stint on these tyres before taking softs in between lap 33 and 41. According to the current weather predictions, drivers will experience more gloomy weather on the first day, with considerable interruptions from rain. There is a moderate to high chance of rain, especially in the late morning. Temperature is expected to fluctuate between 11 to 28 degrees Celsius. And further, southwesterly winds are expected throughout the day. For the entire day, the chance of rain will remain at 60%. The second day is expected to be sunny in the morning, even though a few quick showers are expected around noon. But the chance of rain will decrease in the afternoon. The current weather report predicts a 40% chance of rain on the second day, with moderate westerly winds blown throughout it. The temperature is expected to fluctuate within the range of 9 to 17 degrees Celsius. 
on the final day. The chance of rain will remain at 40% like on the second day, and quick showers are expected by noon. Southwesterly winds will blow throughout the day with a maximum speed of 40 kilometers an hour during the race. There will be comfortable weather conditions throughout the day, as temperature is expected to fluctuate within the range of 10 to 17 degrees Celsius. When analysing the performance of each team over the last three races in Canada, Spain and Austria, it can be clearly noticed that Red Bull is no longer the most dominant team in the championship. Now, the McLaren team has a challenger to match the performance of the RB20 of the Red Bull team. Even during the last race in Austria, Lando Norris became a direct threat to Verstappen in every session, and after experiencing poor qualifying, Piastri started the race as 7th and was able to improve his position up to 2nd when he crossed the finish line. All these performances of the McLaren drivers are clear evidence of the presence of the power within the McLaren challenger to compete at the top. After their Monaco heroics, people had a lot of expectations on the Ferrari team, but they appeared to be in need of a lot of improvements to match the performance of Red Bull and the McLaren teams. The situation of Mercedes was also similar, despite George Russell clinching the victory in the Austrian Grand Prix, thanks to the collision between Verstappen and Norris. Overall, the Mercedes team is in a better position than the Ferrari team. So, Verstappen and Norris are the clear favourites to record a victory here in Silverstone on a regular race day. However, Verstappen has won this event only on a single occasion, and that was also last year when he had the powerful RB19 challenge up. Simply put, this is not a Verstappen-friendly event. That means Norris has a good opportunity to win his home Grand Prix. So, that's the end of our pre-race analysis of the British Grand Prix. What are your predictions for the British Grand Prix? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula 1 news. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.